Five, four, three, two, one. So I've been hearing a lot lately about the vagus nerve. There's a trend on TikTok where people ice their chest or even submerge their whole face in ice water, all in the name of this nerve. I want everybody to know about this magic. My skeptical alarm bell started ringing and I wondered what even is the vagus nerve in the first place? And are these home techniques to stimulate the vagus nerve legit? I dug deeper and below the ice, it turns out the story of the vagus nerve goes all the way to cutting edge tech that aims to target chronic diseases. It's fascinating, and this story is still being written. This video is sponsored by Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany. Okay, first, a quick anatomy refresher. So your vagus nerve is really, really, really big. It starts in your brainstem, and then it connects to your heart, your lungs, your stomach, your large intestines, your small intestines, uh, your adrenal glands, all kinds of stuff happening in this area. You actually have a pair of vagus nerves, a right side and left side vagus nerves, and vagus is actually the Latin word for wandering. So you can imagine that this big nerve starts in the brain and then it wanders down and connects to all of these different parts of your body and has a lot of different roles. The vagus nerve carries information in both directions. Sensory information is carried from other organs to the brain, while the brain sends information to these organs to help regulate functions like breathing, heart rate, and digestion. And it intersects with your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, the parasympathetic nervous system is best known for two things. One is the fight or flight response. It's your response to things that are stressful or fearful the other is the relaxation response, which, let's be honest, that's where we all want to be. We all want to be relaxed, less anxious, less stressed, all that good stuff. So your vagus nerve plays a really important role in both of these systems, which is why a lot of people try to tap into it, because they're trying to get out of this stress response and into this relaxation response. It's been praised as one solution to our stress and anxiety and insomnia. but is that actually true? Because if it is, I kind of want in on that. So the first call in my vagus nerve investigation was to Dr. Ali Matu. Ali is an expert in anxiety and has treated it at the best hospitals. Vanessa, so much, so much attention gets focused on all the stuff that activates us. So can the vagus nerve be used to relieve my own anxiety? And how? And here is this thing that is majorly involved in in calming us down, um, in activating the parasympathetic nervous system, in getting us back to homeostasis. So in my old age, I've become quite anxious and I would love to be more relaxed. I'm just kind of getting a feel for the vagus nerve, what it is. What would you recommend me doing? Well, you're not alone. Anxiety-related problems are the most common problem in, in all of mental health world. I love really basic physical things. The first one is breathing. Just finding ways to slow your breath down. You can do a slow inhale of five and then a slow exhale of seven. You're basically wanting to get that oxygen CO2 level back in balance and anything that slows your breath down, it's going to help trigger that parasympathetic nervous system. Have you ever heard of progressive muscle relaxation? Yes, I really like that. Oh. It's actually really good when you can't sleep. I love mm -hmm. tightening of my fist, imagining I've got mm -hmm. a lemon in there. I'm squeezing all that lemon juice out, holding on to that tension, holding on to it, and let go. And you notice how different your muscles feel. You notice some of that relaxation kick in. But I still have a niggling question. So for all of these stress relief techniques, how do we actually know that the vagus nerve is what is responsible for how we're feeling? Could it be something else going on in our body instead? So I'm going to read you something that my fact checker sent mm. me about the vagus nerve. My fact checker is skeptic number one. That's why she's my fact checker. While it's somewhat straightforward to show that a certain activity causes a response in the vagus nerve or that a technique reduces anxiety, it's pretty hard to prove that that thing reduces anxiety by activating the vagus nerve. A lot of techniques are questionable. 
or rather they might reduce anxiety, but they might not have anything to do with the vagus nerve. I'm a behavioralist. I am most interested in the function in what's going on with your emotions and, and what can we do to help you to function better. And if you're kind of noticing really carefully, I was talking a lot more about the parasympathetic nervous system and I was talking a little bit less about the vagus nerve because it is no one is doing this kind of research. For most people, I think what's much more important is learning what are the different ways in which you can soothe your body when it needs to be soothed. And Ali's last piece of advice is one that actually does work by stimulating the vagus nerve. There's a lot of research on it, how it can do everything from lowering anxiety to helping treat PTSD and COVID-19 patients. It may be the best and most reliable vagus nerve stimulation technique to use at home. But my all time favorite one, is the dive reflex. Do you know about this thing? <laughs> okay, this is the moment where Ali's advice perfectly intersects with the TikTok trends of icing and head dunking to activate the vagus nerve, which I hadn't even mentioned yet. I was gonna specifically ask you about this. <laughs> so, I love the dive okay. reflex. I came across all of these videos on YouTube about icing, icing mm. your chest, icing your face. Is this a legit thing? Icing can do a lot of different things. One one thing it does is it it really shocks your nervous system. So icing can totally be a thing. The dive reflex goes like a little beyond that. Ali is very poetic about the dive reflex. It is so beautifully optimistic to me because this this dive reflex is something that we share with every vertebrae on this planet, which kind of shows us this like shared history. Now, this mammalian dive reflex happens when our bodies think they're diving into water. It triggers relaxation mm -hmm. and it slows down your heart rate. Your parasympathetic nervous system's like, ah, you're in water. Okay, time to get to work because I need you to stay alive in water for a long time and I need to slow down your oxygen consumption and all that sort of stuff. Okay, have a guess. What do you think it is that plays a role in this dive reflex? I really hope you would have got it by now because it's the vagus nerve. It carries information to your organs to regulate those things like breathing and heart rate. But the coolest thing is that you don't have to dive your entire body into water to activate this. You can kind of trick yourself to do it. All you need to do is you need to kind of get this area, the like mm -hmm. ski mask area covered mm -hmm. in water, hold your breath for about 15, 30 seconds, you'll feel it kick in, it's uncontrollable, it goes into gear. You might not wanna do it if you have a heart condition, talk to your doctor about that because it does slow your heart rate, but this is your parasympathetic nervous system, this is your vagus nerve doing what it's built to do. So at this point, my clinical advice and my TikTok trend curiosity kind of intersected at this point where they determined my next move. I'm going underwater. I'm going to submerge my face into a really, really cold mixture of ice and water to try to tap into my vagus nerve. I really hope it works because it sounds terrible. Things that I'm concerned about include getting water in my eyes. I really hate getting water in my eyes. Not being able to hold my breath. The general discomfort of having my face in ice water for 15 to 30 seconds. To me, it seems like a form of torture, actually. I just wanna check that I'm doing this right. She has a towel, that's really good intel. Five, four, three, two, one. Good job, good job. In there. <laughs> it's so cold. You gotta, you gotta put it back in. You gotta, you gotta keep multiple times. <gasps> I feel like I'm in Antarctica. <laughs> and now I can't even see where this is. <laughs> oh. 
Oh! oh, it's terrible. I do feel like a lift. It's a thrill. Maybe it's the thrill of survival. <laughs> Maybe that's what people get out of this stuff. There's this feeling that I want to do it again. <laughs> Okay, I didn't expect to like this at all, but over the next few days, I dunked my face another seven times because I really liked how it felt. I feel really good. I'm not just saying that for the camera so I can have this really juicy video. I can't feel my anxious emotions as much now, but they'll come back and then I'll just dunk again. <gasps> Vegas nerve, who knew, who knew? Honestly, one of the coolest things that I found out about the Vegas nerve was that beyond its role in reducing anxiety, reducing stress, it may actually play a role in treating depression and epilepsy and a whole bunch of other things through potential bioelectronic devices that people possibly get implanted in their body to stimulate their vagus nerve using electricity. Really cool. So while the way that some of these home remedies can target the vagus nerve is quite, well, vague, there is a lot more research and development that is happening right now in a way that is really, really precise. And through that, we'll learn even more about the vagus nerve and in a way that can help us target and treat chronic diseases. There's this whole area of research and development called bioelectronics. And in this field, scientists are developing smart neurostimulators to treat chronic diseases. Now, you're probably familiar with neurostimulators, even if you might not realize it. A pacemaker is one, for example. But smart neurostimulators are currently being researched to go further. Not only are they hoped to treat chronic diseases by stimulating specific nerves, but also to potentially monitor and record what's happening in the body to create a feedback loop where they deliver precise treatment. In the US, the FDA has approved vagus nerve stimulation to treat things like epilepsy and depression in certain patients, as well as for stroke rehabilitation. Merck at KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, are working to develop smart bioelectronic medical devices that are aimed to work in part by targeting the vagus nerve. And this is where everything comes full circle with the vagus nerve. You might recall that Merck at KGAA Darmstadt Germany are also the sponsor of this video and what their bioelectronic devices could look like in the future is an electrode wrapped around the vagus nerve that selectively stimulates the nerve when necessary to treat people in this personalized and coordinated way. Research and development is ongoing, but it's pretty exciting just to see what the future of bioelectronics holds. So while it is an excellent trait to be a little bit skeptical of random trends that you see on TikTok, it's an even better trait to be able to change your mind about something. When I started making this video, I was pretty skeptical, but I learned that the vagus nerve actually helps regulate a lot of your bodily functions without you even realizing it. It happens unconsciously. And you can consciously activate it to help relieve stress and anxiety. And who knows all the different ways it'll be harnessed in the future. So not only did I change my mind, I dunked my mind in ice water eight times, and I can't recommend that enough. If you'd like to learn even more about bioelectronics and the future of personalized medicine, please head over to the link in the top line of the description. A big thanks to Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany for sponsoring this video. They're applying all of their expertise in healthcare and materials to advance this area of medicine, all aiming to bring new hope and treatments for people living with severe and chronic diseases.